in a movie like this, do you want people, you've talked about, do you want them to fill in the gaps themselves? Do you want them to have an idea of sort of, is there like a, like a unifying theory about it? Or is that getting away from sort of what the true meaning of the movie is? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it's about feeling, you know? It's, um, it's not necessarily about, like, um, compiling, like, a comprehensive backstory of the character for yourself. I think it's about, like, arriving at the feeling articulated um, at the end of the film, and I think there's different paths to that, you know? I think the, the film allows for different routes to that, to the same conclusion. Um, and I think that's the way in which people are able to bring their own experiences to it as well. Mm -hmm. Paul, I was, I was thinking about my feelings towards the film, and the thing that made me the most sad is, why didn't you want to do karaoke? Yeah, I, I'm, I find that scene <laughs> so devastating. <laughs> but it's like, I feel like Callum wants to do karaoke. I think, I, I, you'd be able to tell me if I'm right on this, but I feel like he wants to but can't. There's the, I feel like that's the wrestle that Callum goes through a lot and it's kind of common for him is the kind of relationship with how he perceives himself. But there's kind of a block for him at moments that stops him from fully stepping into his own life. I feel like sometimes he's on the outside of his own life looking in and then other moments he is fully present goofy dancing, very alive, very um, colourful. And that's just one of those moments where he doesn't want to be perceived. He doesn't want to stand up in front of people. And I think it upsets him. It's like it doesn't line up with how he perceives himself as a father. It's one of those moments in the film where he fails. And I can relate to that, you know, that feeling of not being fully able to step in and be who you want to be. One of the things I think is so interesting is the two of you are probably traveling a lot, showing people the film. What has this experience, this film, sort of brought to you personally about traveling? I mean, it's, it's really special showing the film with different audiences and seeing ways that it unifies them and, and ways that they might perceive it differently. But I think... Um, yeah, I mean, it's been it's been nice to be on the road with the team who made the movie. It's been nice to share the experience of sharing the film together. Um, it's it's a really special time. Well, one of the things that you said about normal people, the response is that men should be talking more about mental health. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are again. Here we are talking about <laughs> talking about our feelings again. Yeah, which I I don't know if there's a subconscious attraction that I have to men who are kind of trapped in terms of their own like emotional landscape but um, yeah I think you kind of see the impact that it has on Callum's life that he struggles with that articulacy around that so um, I feel like it's a case study or a example about why everybody should be talking about their feelings or their mental health, but young men in particular, I think there's kind of an epidemic amongst us with that. What do you make of him? I love him. I think he's one of my favorite characters that I've ever played. Um, it's, it's really nice now having a kind of zooming out from the process because when you're filming, everything's happening so quickly. And this is a great example of that. Like we had, Frankie in front of camera four hours a day. So you're working really kind of fast and loose, a lot of it, and also incredibly specific, but having kind of distance from the film and getting to watch it as an audience member who absolutely adores Charlie's work and um, loves the film, it's really nice to view Callum from a distance and feel a huge degree of sympathy for him. And I kind of forgot how funny he is. You know, like when you see it, I'm like, oh, he's really, funny and charming and I think that that's the like just watching it as a fan I really enjoy I found that element very similar too mm. there were a lot of funny moments in the film yeah, yeah. you know the, the feeling of devastation certainly is there but it is a, it is a very funny film we're getting a lot of good response for that in the yeah audience. I feel like you can only really arrive at that devastation or upset through 
likes and kind of humor. And I think that's a testament to your script and Charlie's direction. Do you think that, I mean, we're, when I'm viewing the film through the prism of the film being made, being captured, do you think that there's that sort of remove to a degree that, you know, what we're seeing on the screen, we don't know when it's taking place, for example. You inform us primarily with the soundtrack and the clothing. And by the way, the soundtrack is unbelievable. That's great. A lot of the songs of, that I've, I'm trying to place it maybe in the late 90s. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's lots of different points of view happening in the film, you know, the, the way that the DV kind of anchors um, an almost like factual record of, of things that happened objectively on this holiday. And then you have, you know, these like really direct point of view experiences that young Sophie has on the holiday. And then you have this overarching point of view of adult Sophie looking back. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, there's, there's lots of different, there's lots of different layers to it. Well, did you have a familiarity with a lot of the songs? Um, probably less so. I like obviously know them, but I, I wasn't kind of the music that I was brought up on, yeah. which like that kind of distance was a nice, or I enjoy when there's a, a, a cultural distance from the characters that I play. And um, the music is great, so I'm like a big fan all around of 90s music, yeah. yeah. And then you take it to Losing My Religion is sort of an earlier 90s song, and Under Pressure is part of the 80s, too. Yeah. But it, the soundtrack I, so much informs the film as well, too. Did you have trouble clearing any of the songs? Did you, or was it exactly the songs that you would envision? Yeah, I mean, I think I like went into the edit with some songs in mind that I would like to have included. Um, that sometimes just didn't fit the scene. It didn't fit the tone. It was too, they stood out too much. You know, it's a fine line of picking songs that are known and signify the period and are fun to include. And also songs that would just distract that feel like their only role is to signify the period. Ultimately, every song had to serve the scene. Um, and that was the, the approach that we took. And yeah, they're definitely clustered toward the late 90s, 97, 8, maybe creeping into 9. Um, but uh, yeah, it was also important to include earlier, earlier music. You know, um, many songs from many eras play as we go about our lives, and so yeah, kind of went out of my way to include some some earlier things. When Callum's listening to music through his headphones, it's um, Deacon Blue, which is you know like a track from from the eighties too. Well, you also have the film Carmen here, in which dance plays a role in this film as well too. But you're not a trained dancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But does that, what, what kind of spirit overcomes you when you're dancing? When I'm dancing. Yeah. Um, mostly fear. <laughs> God, I'm dancing in front of a camera and people are going to see this. But um, I feel like the Callum dances in a very different way to um, how Aiden dances in Carmen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's character driven. It's fun. I like dancing. I get it's it's kind of the thing that keeps me up at night when I'm waiting to see a film. I'm like, God, I'm dancing in that scene. I hope I don't look ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But it's one of my favorite moments in the film is when he's trying to get Sophie to join him and he's kind of carefree and really doesn't care. It's kind of removing any vanity from a moment like that in the film, I think really helps. I want to ask you too, emotion plays such a role in the film and leads it in many ways. What's it like, an experience of shooting a film like this in which you know, you are putting yourself out there and for many moments that people feel, you know? Yeah. How do you approach that? I think Char, uh, I actually, we haven't spoken about this at all in press, was the, the scene when Callum kind of, there's a moment where he becomes upset and that was, a, I found that a hard day and Charlie was just so wonderful with knowing that that's a hard thing for actors to do sometimes and just giving the time and space that it, it needed. But I, I find it seems like that really hard because they're sore physically. Your body doesn't really know what's up <laughs> and you're kind of running it through the mill. But um, it's, al it's also, I think, I feel 
a test that this may be, but that it is a film that I think is emotionally restrained as well, which I think allows those moments to really shoot up above it and like in terms of feeling and emotion. But you'll probably talk about this better than I will. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I, I agree. I think there's moments in the film that are very overtly emotional, mm -hmm. like that yeah. one. But for the most part, the, like, ultimate emotion of the film is crafted through the components of the filmmaking, you know, the, the, the structure, the way that scenes are cut up against each other, um, the way that one moment goes into the next. And I think that's where film is really special because you have the ability to make things out of sequence, you have the ability to have sound act in opposition to picture to create a feeling, you know? I think it's a feeling medium and um, that's what excites me the most about it. I just wanted to say how incredible this is that it's your debut film. Thanks. <laughs> Paul, that your debut performance on screen mm -hmm. was so resonant with me as well too. And I think you have some coming up that I can't wait to see as well. Um, and both of you were just so tremendous. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so yeah. much. Thanks very much.